I think Mr. BP Earthwatch has found Mount Maru, Rupus Negra, the Black Mountain, the Magnetic Mountain at the North Pole. January the 4th, 2024. Because you're looking at a model of what happens to our planet when it's struck by the solar stream. It creates our shields. That's the only way that we have life here. And just watch the animation a moment. You'll see what I'm talking about. But because of the shields, we have an atmosphere. Notice in this diagram, it's sun facing back to your left. But you have different polarities, one at the top and one at the bottom. I have a reason for going here, so just bear with me. But again, sunlight and the solar stream create this shield called the magnetopause. If not, again, the atmosphere would be stripped back and everyone would perish from radiation poisoning very quickly. But uh, this is the protector of our planet. In the middle of that, you see smaller loops. That's called our plasmosphere. That's very important, too. I'll do a separate video on it. Again, the sunlight is what we're dealing with and always the direction of what you see trailing behind our planet is opposite of the sun because it's blowing it back across there it's very important and again i'm going to show you why let's go to today's magnetopause current and uh, take a look at it what we're dealing with is the pressure that's on our planet notice your time stamp top right well, this will fade back out but it's today, and the pressure's coming from the left. That's where the sun is. In the center of these diagrams is a gray circle with another dot that's white on one side and black. The white indicates the daylight side of the planet. Now, what's important to note, again, is that everything is determined by the direction of the incoming uh, solar wind. Now, on the right side, that's a side cut of what we're looking at you're looking down and on the left side it's a kind of uh, sliced in half but notice on the right side we've got an angle to that both the impact and the burn off switching now from the pressure to the density and this is in plasma centimeters cubed just like we see on the graph when we're watching how dense an incoming cme is but uh, you're looking at the strengthening today here it's kind of normal. You've got a smaller, what's called a plasmosphere. But that plasmosphere can sense an incoming uh, increase in solar pressure, solar wind speed, density, and all that. And our plasmosphere reacts to that before it hits us and expands out to increase the size of our shield. It's amazing. But again, all of this, uh, all of the... Uh, backward motion the blowback was determined by the uh direction of the incoming that and from the sun so everything's blowing straight back you're looking also at today's current high level jet streams and what you're seeing now is cold air blowing down into the u.s and it, into canada you're seeing moisture created by the el nino in the gulf but the reason i'm coming here is uh, this anomaly we've been seeing on the north pole also the south pole And we had a lot of great comments on the last video talking, video talking about there's fields created because of what's happening inside our planet. A large ball of liquid metal spinning and creating the fields. But that relies on how much energy is coming from the sun, just the way you saw it as the sun hit our planet, just like uh, opposite ends of an electric motor. The more energy, the faster it spins, the larger your magnetic field. Now let's look at today at the North Pole. Notice that uh, it's very bright. Let me get it up closer. You've got a lot of blowback, and it's like a shield. Now, this is a pause because just behind this glowing shield is the center, and that's where we're seeing energy coming out of the top of the Earth. If you look at the ends of the lines, you can see that it is an outflow. But what is different? the direction of the incoming it's coming from the top so why isn't the shield bend uh wrapping over to that angle normally that's what you would see if the earth was changing any kind of direction as far as the poles to the sun the shields would change to protect it but that's not what's happening here normally again it would be coming 
just like that. And it will, and this will stay the same. The other day, the solar, excuse me, the jet stream was coming from the left. And it appeared normal for it to have this type of shield. It's just on the edge of the jet stream. Once the jet stream gets away from it, you'll see those colors calm down. The oranges and the reds and stuff. But notice that, again, the direction is directly south. So it's kind of another unexplained part of what we're looking at. I'm lowering, lowering this into uh, different depths. But the same thing's happening, again, from the surface. There's something there. You can tell that the shields or whatever is being affected is different. Now, if you look at the South Pole, you're going to see the same thing. They're different in winter, though. It's not nearly as strong. But if, once this changes, again, we're still at the North Pole, you will see um, a change in this glow. So why is that direction increasing the pressure, increasing the size of what appears to be some type of shield, but not the shield's not reacting to the incoming direction just like anything else normally would. But take a look at this. You've got uh, that, it, again, lower levels, that the blue object to the left, which appears to be where the shield or whatever that phenomenon is, but uh, just behind it, We've got that spin. Let me pull this back again. You can see what's going on. Why is it at both poles? Is it just in the model? If it was just in the model, why are we getting that glowing effect of the shield that decreases as the solar wind speed decreases, especially, and not solar wind, but the jet stream, especially when it's out of the uh, very uh, middle of the uh, jet stream itself? Check this out. Shield looks a little different. That's because we are now on the Antarctic. It's not going to be as strong because they are in summertime. The winter time is when it wraps really tight and uh, contains all that cold air in the Arctic, like we're seeing now. But during the winter, you come back and look at this, you'll see that it's very energetic at their pole. And actually, the jet stream appears to be much stronger and a wider circle. But guys, I just wanted to bring that up because it uh, another piece of the puzzle that needs to be answered. Now, there were a lot of good comments in the last video about this, talking about the feel that's generated by a large ring inside the planet, basically liquid metal that's revolving and generating. But all of that, again, relies on how much energy is coming from the sun. If not, it would just be a dead motor sitting there. But what are we looking at here? Again... Searching for answers, I did contact the guy that created this model. And I'm waiting for a reply asking basically, what are we seeing? So I'll let you know as soon as I find something out, guys. We're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe. So the only thing I would say is that he seems to be conflating the jet stream with solar wind. He says that you would only see this on that side if the solar wind was coming from that direction and then he refers to the jet stream the air on planet earth that's coming from this direction and implies that the shield should shift around 90 degrees to that side I'm not very well educated in this kind of stuff but that would be my only question one of my first questions to him the other thing I'd like to see is uh, if this happens to be 33 miles because that's what Jay Dreamer says Mount Maru is reported to be. And I know there's a feature there on the, on the uh, computer program that he's using where you can draw a line on the Earth, or at least there is on Google Earth and other such uh, programs, where you can pull out and draw a line and it'll tell you how long it is. Let's see if that sucker's 33 miles wide. Because it does look like a cone, like perfectly round. And both of them are out in the middle of the ocean. Is this an island? I don't know. But I'm pretty sure J Dreamers also believes that this is Mount Maru.